So uh, Jen is continuing to talk about uh, first linguistic category. Right, so I'll keep talking about category of affine V algebras. Before that, let me quickly go through the notations and some results that we derived last time, two weeks ago. So, so G is a simple algebra and big G is, a, is the corresponding simply connected Lie group. In K, let's not fix it, but it's a bilinear invariant form on G. And then we define the critical, critical, critical pairing or critical level to be minus one over two times the killing form. And then we define G, G kappa hat to be our F and the algebra and is a ve C vector space. That's just G tensor. Uh, so it's the Lorentz polynomial tensor G and then you plus another dimension, which is coming from the central element. And then the V bracket is defined as follows. And then we define the category of Kutzan Lustig modules to be the uh, to be the full subcategory of GK hat modules, where the objects are are those that are acted neopotently uh, sorry acted locally neopotently uh, by TG by the thing whose order is larger than one, and to understand this correctly, let's focus on the right top just means that for each vector v in v, there is some integer n such that uh, uh, if you have more than n monomials, then all of them act on v by zero. And in particular, this uh, implies that t to, t to the n, so everything whose order is large, whose degree is larger or equal to n, uh, X on V by zero. And also the second condition is that G should, uh, the action of the Lie algebra should integrate to G, uh, which is redundant here because I assume G to be a simply connected, but the story also plays well for uh, a simply connected G. In that case, you do have to assume this extra condition. And VN, uh, this notation is somehow ad hoc, but it's important. So let's define it again. Qn is uh, is the is a it's a subspace of the universal enveloping algebra that's generated by uh, n monomials, and Vn are it's just a subs vector subspace of V uh, consisting of the vector that's killed by Vn. So with this uh, notation, the first condition here for the custom lucid category is uh, uh, implies that your V is actually the union of VL. Okay, so we have more assumptions that, I'm, that I will talk about it again when we use it. And so we define, uh, we denote L0 to be the Sugawara Sugawara operator. Um, and the basic fact is that the bracket of L0 and T and X is N times T and X. And this fact would, would imply that the, the spectrum of, gen, of generalized well modules go, goes on discreetly. So what's a uh, generalized well module? Well, it's just a, so uh, you start with a, a finite dimensional GT representation, and then you extend that to GK plus uh, by by letting the central element C to act as one, uh, and then you in, you apply the induced functor, and we will denote the induced form by M upper kappa. Okay, and the while module is a special generalized module which starts from a finite dimensional G ir irreducible representation, and then you. You, you first extend that trivially to the higher degree part, and then you do the same thing. So a well module is a, is a general, generalized well module. Okay, so that's recall the statement and skip the proof. The first proposition says that any generalized well module is, uh, actually has a finite filtration with the quotients being well modules. 
And the second proposition says that uh, for a generalized well module V, the action of L0 induces a, a uh, so you can break V uh, into a countable direct sum of finite dimensional generalized eigenspaces of L0. So, uh, right. And then the third, th third statement is just a, a, a corollary that follows from the proof of the second statement that says that the, um, the eigenvalues of this action of L0 acting on uh, the, the well module V lambda kappa are just P kappa lambda and then goes on discreetly. So recall that P kappa lambda is the highest, uh, is the highest uh, uh, L0 eigenvalue for uh, V lambda kappa. And then as G modules, um, the 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 generalized eigenspace corresponding to the generalized eigenvalue p kappa lambda is isomorphic to v lambda as g modules. So uh, this is what we had last time. Let me continue if there is no question or if you want me to recall a specific part, just let me know. Right, so if there's no question, let me continue. Okay, so. So proposition four says the following, um, that any well, module, again, it's, it's always in this form by definition has a unique irreducible quotient. Um, quotient, which will denote it by, denoted by L lambda kappa and B statement is that if lambda is not mu, this implies that these modules are not isomorphic. Okay, so just, uh, we haven't introduced L lambda, so this should not create any confusion, but there's actually a little bit confusion because I, like I denoted any modules to the upper K to be uh, the induced module, but here it's not L lambda in it's not an induced L lambda. So have to be a little bit careful about this. But te te technically we are not uh, crashing any symbols. So the proof, so by the last statement, corollary three, uh, we have that uh, the general second space corresponding to, oops, corresponding to this general second value of this vector space uh, is a irreducible G module. It's irreducible. Right, because we, we proved that that's just V lambda and V lambda is a irreducible G module. So, so for any proper sum module, proper sum module M of uh, V lambda kappa, V lambda, uh, sorry, M is not going to touch this highest generalized stuff. So it's zero, because if it does, then it generates everything. It's not proper. So it's, since it's proper, it, it doesn't touch the highest part. Uh, so every proper sum module 
stays away from a non-trivial part. So in particular, the highest, you know, the maximal thing, which is you take the sum, still stays away from it. Okay, so hands, the maximal submodule is contained. It's also contained. It is, it is contained in this. So we we go down at least one d kappa lambda minus n d kappa lambda. Okay. So therefore, uh, the lambda kappa has a unique sub quotient. And again, I'm going to uh, denote that quotient. by L. Hmm? You mean quotient? Oh, unit quotient. Irreducible quotient. Right. So every submodule is contained in this, so there is a unique maximal mm -hmm. submodule. And mm -hmm. suppose there is a unique irreducible quotient. Right. Yes. So this proves A, proving A. Okay, then that's proof two. So two says if lambda is not mu, then the then this simple module are not equivalent. So let's suppose that lambda is not mu, but conversely, L lambda kappa is isomorphic to L mu kappa, and we want to give you a contradiction. So if this is true, then we have that. So by the so by definition, L lambda kappa is just a unique irreducible quotient of V lambda kappa, and since they are isomorphic, we have a onto map from V lambda kappa to L uh, L mu kappa. Okay, and by the argument last time, we see that the highest L0 generalized eigenvalue are the same. So by argument last time, we have P kappa lambda is P kappa mu. And by the way, this is KO. Well, anyway, we don't actually need the formula now. We only need that these, is a, these are the same, but then we use corollary three again. We have that p kappa, p kappa lambda, p lambda kappa is by corollary three isomorphic to v lambda as a g module. Here I have an, another isomorphism that says it's a p kappa lambda, l lambda kappa. Okay, it's by the same argument as last time. And then, of course, we have P kappa lambda, L mu kappa, because the generalized eigenvalues are the same. And this is V mu by corollary three again. So then we have this, wait. So then we have this, which is a contradiction. I don't know if you like this notation. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. If there's no question, we have to get a corollary of this uh, proposition four. Uh, it says that the dimension of the home space of G hat uh, homomorphism V lambda kappa to L mu kappa is zero or one depending on mu, a lambda and mu. Uh, so a proof, it's easy. So uh, let me see if I can just say the proof. So so this is an irreducible, irreducible module, non-trivial non irreducible module. That means if you have a non-trivial map from from V lambda kappa, then it, it, it must maps onto it. OK, 
Okay, so when lambda is not mu, as we see in the previous proposition, there should not be uh, there should not be any unto map. So the only thing that's left is the zero map. So indeed, when when lambda is uh, not mu, this space is zero. When lambda is mu, uh, then this essentially so when lambda is mu. I claim that the dimension of, of this space is one, and this essentially follows from the, what's the name for lemma? <laughs> uh, follows from the shortest lemma. So you want to find a ratio. So, okay, so given, so if you have two non-trivial morphisms, you want to prove that they are proportional to each other, then you first factor through their kernels, and then there you can apply the shortest lemma to get a ratio and that ratio is what you want. It's too simple, let me not write it down. To save some time, to prove is verbal. It's a proof that I have talked about it. In the proposition five, it's called the universal property of well module. Okay, so it uh, says that let V lambda kappa be a while module. So again, a while module by definition is just an induced V lambda, where V lambda is an irreducible G module. It's always in that form. And, uh, and a G kappa hat module. Then, there's an isomorphism of vector space that says the home from G, G lambda kappa to N is isomorphic to the, the space of G morphism from V lambda to N one. So uh, you should recall that this just means all N in this such that any, any TG, so T, TGN kills it, zero. It's just a recall. Okay, so how do we prove it? Well, the proof is by uh, essentially first using the, rep the recipro, so let me just write it by reciprocity. Uh, we haven't, Equivalence of uh, vector space uh, of vector space. So that's from the left hand side to a middle vector space, which is a G. So the the positive part and the central part, V lambda n, right? Here we have an induced one, and here we have a reduced one. This this holds for uh, this this should hold for all algebras and subalgebras. So we have an equivalence. So now I only have to prove that uh, the right hand side, this one, is equivalent to to the the space of G morphisms, right? So. Uh, so, uh, so claim we have, uh, so this inclusion induced another inclusion uh, right? Why? Because if you have a if you have a a vector on the left hand side, you just compose that with n, and since v lambda as a GT plus CC module is a uh, is defined by extending that trivially to them, so you have something on the right. Okay, and this. But that the letter map is on two. 
too. And this is because, well, it's again by the definition of V lambda as a module of GT plus CC. So if you have, okay. So if you have some phi on the right hand side, and you can argue that, so maybe let me just write it down formally. GTT plus CC for all V in V lambda um, phi V is going to be in N1. And this is why, uh, because anything that's higher that has T commutes with phi, but that would kill V, so that would kill phi, phi V. So anything that's higher will, will kill phi V. So phi V is in N1. So that, so that map is actually on two. Okay. This is because. All right. So the statement is proved. Again, it shows uh, like it's a it like it's a good e equivalence because we we're supposed to understand. So we understand the right hand side much better than the left hand side. So Good statement. And a quick corollary of that statement is that V lambda and L lambda kappa one are isomorphic with the G module. So as a GT plus CC module. Well, it's only because that on the left hand side, G, uh, TGT plus CC acts trivially, and on the right hand side, it also acts trivially. Wait. Yes. Okay. So the proof is immediate given what we had above. So we want to prove that they are isomorphic as G module. So let's just look at their home space. Uh, okay, by, by proposition five, this is just GT plus CC, V lambda, L lambda kappa, and then by reciprocity, this is V lambda kappa, L lambda kappa, but by the delta thing, corollary 4.1, this is one. So we proved it. Any questions about this? Okay. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, maybe I missed something. So you, you show that this uh, dimension of this home set is one. Oh, dimension, right. Uh, does this immediately imply that they're isomorphic? Uh, yeah, it's sure, sure lemma. G is a sim simply algebra. Uh, oh, and what see. assumptions did we use? For example, I can have, say we know V lambda is reducible, right? Yes. Uh, this argument yeah. shows that the multiplicity of V lambda in uh, this L lambda kappa one is equal to one. Yes. But for the same price, you see that the multiplicity of all the other reducibles are equal to zero. Okay, I see. Thanks. Exactly, yes, I miss it. So I still need to say, well, I should just change this to mu, no, mu, this dimension is a delta mu lambda. Yeah, sorry for that. Okay, proposition six, 
says that any generalized wall module is finite length. This really uh, requires an assumption and that we made last time. Let me write this down. So this assumption says the kappa that we are at over the killing form. So since G is, semi, uh, G is simple, uh, there's only one dimensional invariant by linear forms. Um, plus one over two is not a non-negative rational numbers. So assumption. Recall assumptions I did last time. So the proof is this. Well, you can prove by the assumption, so but it's somehow uh, combinatorial or set theoretical. We have an exercise that says the following set is finite. So that set is defined to be the subset, the dominant. Uh, lattice such that p kappa lambda minus p kappa delta a wait uh oh wait a second well let me write it down first um R0 equal to one. Again, recall that if you want, then you want to use the formula. Oops. K minus the critical level lambda lambda plus two rho. Okay. But I forgot to say what lambda is. Okay, so now we are now we are going to prove that any generous wall module has finite length. For the claim that it suffices to prove for wall modules because of uh, because, uh, so recall that in the first proposition, we proved that any generalized well module actually has a finite filtration with quotients being well modules. So if we can prove this for well modules, uh, then we are done because a generalized well module can be built up by finitely many well modules, right? Because of proposition one, so that's, take one uh, well module and call it uh, V V lambda kappa. So that's this lambda, right? Okay. And then the claim is that, you have to claim them for any G kappa hat module, um, that's actually modules. So for any chains of G kappa modules, uh, M2, M1, in uh, the chosen well module, there is some vector that's in M1, but not in M2, such that M is a generalized, generalized L0 eigenvector. 
with the corresponding eigenvalue in the set above uh, in S. So before showing this claim, let me tell you why this claim, why after proving this claim, uh, we're immediately done, okay? So with this claim, we are done. We will be done if we prove this claim because the length of the well module would then be bounded by the sum Okay, well, this is just because, yeah, it's it's directly from the claim. And then the, the exercise tells us that uh, the set is finite. So here uh, you have a direct, uh, you, you have a finite sum with these dimensions we have proved before, uh, but I think it's in proposition two, each of the sum and are also finite. Double check if that's proposition two. Yes. So we have a decomposition into countable direct sum of finite dimensional generalized segment spaces. So I only have to show this claim. So here's a proof of claim. So it remains to show this claim, proof of claim. Let me uh, denote M, uh, M tilde, sorry. Let M tilde to be the quotient in one M2. And over M2, the set of eigenvalues of this action uh, is bounded above and discrete and and, 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 and goes down integrally integrally discreetly bah, goes down discreetly by one 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 and this is because uh, our our wall module is so which is also proved last time and this is just some the quotient of its submodule, so it's also the case. So we can let uh, sigma to be a maximal one. Maximal generalized eigenvalue. Well, just eigenvalue because we're only treating the raw module. So that means, oops, that means wait, I forgot to write. This is a max eigenvalue and M is a eigenvector. Okay. So then notice that TXM must vanish. where x is any element in our Lie algebra. Uh, this is because the simple fact, because if it doesn't vanish, then its, it's eigenvalue will increase by one, but we, we assume that m, oh, well, we assume that its eigenvalue is maximal. So this must vanish, so hence, this proves that tg, uh, x is zero, X is zero on this uh, eigenspace. space. So, so do G and G. No, I, I, I can't say this. So, 
So G and G axon. So G and G act on this subspace. So uh, we also know that this is finite dimensional. So there exists a, a G, uh, G wrap that embeds into this G action. So that's say it's a V, v mu embeds into this subspace. Um, and then by reciprocity, we have a non-trivial map. Oops, it's V, oops, V mu kappa, non-trivial map into uh, M lambda. Um, Hold on, so what's next? Oh yeah, of course. So, M lambda has a generalized general eigenvector. No, with generalized eigenvalue P kappa mu. Okay. These are all with respect to L, L0. And since um, since uh, oh, since M1 is not, it's assumed to not be the whole well mo uh, module. We know that it at least should, uh, so let me just write it. P kappa lambda and P kappa mu should uh, be positive, strictly positive. So mu is in S, claiming, uh, proving the claim. And I just said that after this claim, we are done. So we are done. Okay. Any questions? Okay, if it's okay, let's Finally, look at the category O. So let, let me first define what the category O is. Category O of our G kappa hat. So let O oops, be the first category. For custom Lusik uh, category, so again, it's it just means that uh, we want the modules to be to be acted locally, neopotently, and then it integrates to the Lie group action. So that's KL kappa, and the category O is a further full subcategory consisting. of finally generated uh, G kappa representations. So not only we want that to be uh, acted locally and importantly, we want it to be finally generated. 
some good finiteness. Proposition seven, uh, characterize character O from another viewpoint. So a G kappa head representation, well, it is finitely generated, namely it's in uh, category O, if and only if that V is a quotient of a generalized wall modules, generalized. Okay, very useful. So, right. So, being a quotient of a generalized wall module is, is, is equivalent to the fact that uh, it's finite generated. So, let us prove this. Prove. Let's first prove from right to left, because I think it's easier. Whoa. So let V be a generalized, uh, generalized wall module. And all right, wait a second. Does it suffice to prove it? So I will pro I'll first prove that V is finally generated. Oh, of course. So at, then any quotient is also finally gen generated. So suffice to prove for generalized well module for this direction. So that V to be a generalized well module. Um, so what's a generalized well module by, by definition? But uh, I think it's fair to say that a uh, generalized while module is manifestly finitely generated. Is what? A generalized while module is manifestly finitely generated just by the construction. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes, 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 yes. Because it starts, okay, so let me just, let me not write it, but just say it because it's uh, it's from a finite dimensional, it's from a finite, finite dimensional GT module, and then you take induction. So you, you, you first look at that finite dimensional thing, you take a basis, which is a finite set, and that would generate everything. Okay, so by definition, um, yes. So from right to left is, is almost trivial. From right to left, um, let me see. Slightly not not that trivial, but it's also not too bad. So, first let V to be in O. Let me call all of its uh, condition. So the positive part, it's locally neopotently on V. The the D algebra action integrates to the D group action. Sorry. There is some, uh, there is a finite set, finite subset of V. So it's, it's finite and it generates V. Um, so I want to prove that V is a quotient of a generalized well module. Let me make a, let me make a well module. So by one, um, GTS, um, well, you also have to linearize it. is a finite dimensional wait okay let me write it first so gts gtx on s 
or oh yes, of course, it's a finite dimensional. Uh, it's a finite dimensional GT submodule of the restriction. Right, okay. So we have a finite dimensional GT module. And then of course you just induction, you uh, induction and that gives you a, and use reciprocity. Okay, let me write down my reciprocity. You have a map. So after you take induction, you have a non-trivial map to V and this is this is on two simply because of three the assumption three because they're both generated by generated by s so in particular everything in v is hit well th then we're done right because m kappa is is a generalized wall module so v is a quotient of it So being finally generated is equivalent to being a quotient of generalized wall modules. Okay. So uh, we now have two ways to characterize what character O is. Here I want to give you um, two other ways. So totally we will have four and actually we'll have another which is much stronger, but I'll not talk about that. I'll not talk about the detail this time. Here we have more equivalent statements that characterize character uh, category O. Okay, so it says that V be uh, an object in the Hassan Lustig category, and the following are equivalent. So one, Vn is finite, is finite dimensional. And Vn generates V as a G kappa hat module for some n. So recall that Vn is just a vector subspace V that's going to be killed by uh, more than n monomials. Okay, so this subspace is finite dimensional though V is not. It's finite dimensional and then it's, uh, it generates V as a GK hat module for some finite n, okay? And then the second statement is that V is a quotient of a generalized wall module. So the second statement is what we had in the previous proposition. So since, right, and the third, V admits finite filtration. Quotients being the simple modules that we talked about uh, in the beginning of this talk. Okay, so we mark that this is uh, equivalent to that V is in O by seven. Okay, so one, two, three, and that V is in O are equivalent. Right. And recall that this is the unique irreducible quotient of uh, V mu kappa, where V mu is some 
to some irreduce, uh, five dimensional irreducible for G modules. Have a great view. Okay. So now we have four equivalent statements. Before I prove that, let me show what we have from it. So corollary nine said, okay. So category O is obedient. So this is the proof that category O is obedient follows directly from the third statement in proposition A. So this statement. All right, because um, any object in O, o kappa has a finite filtration with co uh, with uh, quotients being the simple, uh, being the irreducible simple thing. So a Jordan Holder theorem, um, any submodule of, of it and any quotients of it are also in that form. And so by proposition 8.3 again, huh, it's submodules and quotients are also in O. So O is obedient. Okay. Uh, then, uh, when would be a good time for a break? I say this mark. Okay, sure. Good. So the remark is that now I have given you four equivalent statements that characterize category of right? The remark is that there is a fifth one, which a priori is very strong, but they are equivalent to this. And since it's very strong, I'm not going to prove this in this talk. Not sure if I'm not sure if the speaker that follows me will prove this. You can ask that. So this well, is well, I can explain why this is true. Okay, that would be great. So it's this is a theorem, but no proof in this talk. Without proof in this talk, that says that a point one is further equivalent to that V1 is finite dimensional. Okay, so if you look at 8.1, it only says that Vn is finite dimensional. The V1 is a, sus a wait. Uh, if you are in V1, then you're in Vn. Right. Uh, so from left to right, is trivial, but from right to left is highly non-trivial. All right, so. No. Wait. It's the other way around. So the claim if is that if V1 is finally dimensional, then V is actually in category O, is harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I, from left to right is trivial from right to left is, is non-trivial. Okay, that's fine. Mm. Yes. So, right, we can stop here and maybe, yeah, let's stop here. Pause here. Uh, do people have questions? Okay, let's resume. Okay, so since I'm going to prove proposition A and we had a break, so let's uh, quickly recall what the statement is. So if V is in custom logic category, then the following are equivalent. The first statement is that for some positive N, uh, positive integer N, VN is finite dimensional and it generates V as a G cup a head module. Second statement is that V is a quotient of generalized flow module, which is equivalent, equivalent to that V is in category O. 
where V is finally generated. And the third statement is that V admits a finite filtration, with quotients being the simple modules we had before. So let me prove this. I will first prove that the first statement implies the second, so that Vn is good, implying that these are both generalized four modules. Okay, so the first statement says that there is some positive integer n such that uh, Vn generates V and that the dimension of Vn is uh, finite. We want to show that V is a quotient of generalized wall modules. So again, the, the trick is to cook up a generalized wall module and then say it actually surjects onto our Vn. No, oh, sorry. No, uh, surjects onto our V. So, um, so we have a GT module or GT module map that maps VN into V because the because the higher so anything that's higher than N um, would vanish. Okay, since we have this and we have the assumption that Vn is finite dimensional, we just use reciprocity to produce a map from a generalized wall module uh, to V. Well, but since Vn generates V, sorry, this should be V. Since Vn generates V, this is on two. Because of one, okay. Well, and then we are done because V n kappa is a generalized wall module. Its quotient is V, so V is a V is a quotient of a generalized wall module. Okay. From two to three. So two is that two uh, V is a quotient of generalized wall module, and three is that V has a finite uh, finite filtration with the quotients being L mu kappa. Okay, so the assumption says that V is the quotient. Oops, is a quotient of the generalized wall module. We want to prove that V has a filtration. Go to find infiltration. Um, okay, hold on. So, by proposition six, it suffices to prove that it's enough. Wait a second. Okay, so what is two again? Two is that V is a quotient of generalized wall module. Three emits, uh, th three says that V should emit a finite filtration with quotients L mu kappa. So we want to use proposition six, which says that any generalized wall module has finite length. Okay. So we only have to show. Uh, that any irreducible quotient of V is of the form L, uh, L, L mu kappa or some new in the dominant lattice because proposition six says 
any any journal any journal is well module is fine is a finite length. So the finiteness is is, is guaranteed. We we only have to focus at that the irreducible quotient is in that point. Okay, so let's do that. So by proposition four, um, it's enough to construct a non-trivial construct a non-trivial trivial trivial map. Uh, from B mu kappa to Q for some for some mu. Right? This is because the proposition four we show that uh, uh, for any V mu kappa there is a unique reduced quotient and that's going to be our L mu kappa, right? So Q, so, so Q is assumed to be an irreducible quotient. If we have an untrivial map from V mu kappa, then this map must be onto, then by proposition four, Q must be isomorphic to L mu kappa and, and, and then we'll be done. So we want to construct such a non-trivial map. Non-trivial means non-zero. Um, so the trick is the same. So maybe I should just skip this. So, okay, so recall that when we are proving proposition six, we are also doing the same thing, but so what were we doing? We, uh, how, like, how did we construct a non-trivial morphism? Well, we first use the fact that the spectrum is bounded above, so we can pick a maximal generalized eigenvalue and pick a corresponding eigenvector. And then we argue that, oh, actually Tx, uh, so if you argue that Tgt acts a zero on it, because if it's not zero, then the result would have an eigenvalue that's one step higher well, we assume that it's maximal, so that that shouldn't be the case. So we have a G module. We have a G module from V mu to Q. And then by reciprocity, we have such non-trivial map. So the rest is the same as in the proof of proposition six. to generalize, uh, wait, to, to construct non-trivial map. It's the same trick. So, right, uh, you use the fact that the spectrum is bounded above and reciprocity to give you the map. Reciprocity. Bounded above uh, spectrum. Okay. And finally, we want to prove three to one. So what is three? Three is that V emits a finite filtration with quotients being this form, and the one is that there is some positive integer n such that V n is finite dimensional and generates V. So that's a. Uh, Let's open a new page. Three, two, one. So first, let V uh, have a finite filtration. Oops. With quotients being in the form L mu kappa for some mu. Okay. Then immediately, immediately V is finally, hold on. 
right then immediately v is finally generated because each of the l mu kappa is finally generated it's from like it has a finite basis uh i mean it's generated by the finite basis of it's generated by a single element as any reducible model. Yeah, it's generated by a single element. I like I I thought it's V mu kappa. It's generated by a single element and there is like only finally many of them. So V is finally generated. Okay. Um and since V is supposed to be in a Cartesian logic category. Oops. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Oh. oh, that's too bad. But now things went dark and interesting. Can you still hear me? I can hear you, but uh, I don't see the notes that you're writing. Let me, right, okay, so. Let me continue proving three implies one. So since uh, V is assumed to be, oops, V is assumed to be uh, in the cartesian logic category, by definition, the requirement is that the positive part acts locally neopotently on, on V. And so this is just a remark that I, made uh, in the beginning that V is an uh, union of V and N, okay? Um, but since V is finally generated, some V N, since finally generated, some V N contains a set of generators. Okay, so recall that we want to prove one and one is the statement that there is some positive integer n such that vn generates v and that vn is finite, uh, vn is uh, finite dimensional. Uh, vn contains a set of generators, so vn does generate v. Now it remains to show that vn is finite dimensional. Dimension Vn is finite. Okay. Um, so how do we do this? Well, there are some tricks. So we have a short exact sequence. Let's look at this. Uh, zero to V1 to Vn um, to the linear transform from G to V and minus one. Short exact sequence of vector space. Okay. Um, and then the second, the first map is of course the inclusion and the second map is you send GX to G sending to TGX. So it's a direct exercise to check that this is a short exact sequence of vector space. So in order to show that the dimension of V and O, oh, uh, Right, so by induction, <laughs> by induction, it's enough to prove for n equals to one. But, right, it's enough to prove for n equals to one because then um, V2 would also be fine dimensional V3 Finite dimensional V before finite dimensional. Okay. So that's in, instead prove that dimension V1 is finite dimensional. Um, all right. And then we, so any short exact sequence. In the Cartesian Lucid category, 
gives an exact sequence and exact oops exact sequence uh, after you apply the one um, the one operator. Okay, well, it's not in two in general. Well, so enough to show that a show for W1 and V over W1 for all W in V. Well, but we, by the assumption, so what was the assumption? Assumption is three. Assumption said that V has a finite filtration with quotients being L mu K, okay? Well, it's, it's it, well, I should rephrase. So it's enough to show for this, uh, for all, uh, For so, what I mean is, you first take a filtration of V and then W one, W two, oh, V one, V two, V three. Huh? Associated graded. This is how it's usually called. What's that? In any case, you have a finite filtration, so it's enough to show this claim for each sub quotient separately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. So it remains. To show that the dimension of uh, v lambda kappa one, so that's an infinity. But by proposition five, this is equivalent to v lambda as so a G module. But this is fine dimensional, so we are done. Okay, so uh, I just proved one implies two, two implies three, three implies one. So one, two, three are all equivalent. Everything uh, can be used as a definition of category O. Oh, the, uh, yeah. Okay, so finally, I'll briefly talk about the duality functor defined for category O. Uh, then our talk will end here. So, well, actually, so before that, is there any question? Okay, if there's no question, let me start talking about the duality functor. So in fact, I'm going to define this duality functor for a slight, uh, can say slightly, a larger category and then show that it, uh, it restricts to O, okay? So in fact, we will define D for a larger category which I will call C, not defined yet. I'll define soon and show it restricts to an endo functor of all. So let's define the category C. The category C. So let C be the full subcategory of the candlestick category uh, with objects B uh, such that state composition composition. Uh, into 
the generalized eigenspace satisfy the following property. So one dimension of each summand is bi-dimensional for any uh, generalized eigenvalue. And two, we need more space. Two, uh, there are a finite set of complex numbers such that, um, right, such that if, uh, such that the set of generalized eigenvalue, it's getting slow again. The set of generalized eigenvalue is contained in, in these set and Oh, okay, let me just write it down. In these thing and goes down. Okay, so you have a like you have finitely many numbers and then you and then you start going down. This is obviously an infinite set, and then your generalized eigen generalized eigenvalues are all in that. Okay, so this defines a subcategory, full, full subcategory of, of KL. We'll, we'll call that C. Okay. So remark is that um, the proposition to any generalized wall module is an object of C. Right, because there we prove that each generalized value, each generalized eigenspace is finite dimensional. And, and also the, the generalized eigenvalue goes down one by one discreetly um, because of the basic equation of, of Sugurara operator. Um, right. <clears throat> so any quotients of wild modules are also in C. But we but we prove that uh, being a quotient of generalized wall module is equivalent to being an object of category O. So remark is that category O is indeed a subcategory of C. A full subcategory of C indeed, because O and C are defined to be full subcategory of KL. Okay. And then, now let's define the duality operator for C. Let's first define this, and after this, I'll show that it actually restricts to O. So we define, no, I don't have to write this. So given any C object, I'll define dv as follows. In the hope that dv is a uh, is a uh, is also an an object of C. Okay, so it's a vector space. What is dv? It's the vector space dv defined is defined to be the direct sum over chi where the sum end is V chi, and then you take linear dual. Well, v chi is assumed to be finite dimensional, so it's just a, like a very uh, ordinary dual. So the remark is that it's, a, of course, a subspace, proper subspace of, of V dual. Now, this is just a vector space. Well, now I want to give it some action as a G kappa hat module 
the action is given as follows. All right. So hmm. note that there is an anti evolution. Anti evolution. Involution. on the polynomial part. That fixes the central element, but it brings T and X to T minus N X for any X in G. Okay, so recall that the, the polynomial part is the part that's generated by t plus minus one. Oh no, getting slow again. Okay, so we have this anti-involution. Now, let this polynomial part act on our uh, uh, dv, so act on dv, by the sharp twisted inverter, dual action. I'll give you the formula. So that just means if you have some sigma, uh, if you have some, right, sigma acting on some linear dual, the result is another linear dual that when you take a vector v in v, you end up with the value of this. Okay, so you first take the entire involution, you act on sigma, then you act on v, and then you feed it to phi. Okay, so if you don't take this sharp twisting, then I, then the spectrum will, uh, will, uh, the, the, the spectrum will be flipped. Now we, in order for our object to, to be, in, to be in the category C, the spectrum should be bounded above. So if you don't twist it, it's going to be bounded below, not bounded above. So now we twist it, then it's fine. And then you see that it's also because it's bounded above. Okay, so now it's bounded above. This action, so since the spectrum is bounded above, I, yeah, spectrum is bounded above, the action extends to the whole G, uh, G kappa hat, the action extends. Action extends. Right, because for any element in G kappa hat, uh, T N of something will just move the eigenvalue one by one, increasingly, but since the spectrum is bounded above, um, it, it's going to vanish eventually. So any element of G kappa hat, uh, like you can act act on the vector, uh, the functional in a well-defined manner because it's bounded above. Okay. So this gives a G kappa hat um, action now we mark that clearly it's, we are essentially just a dual and an action is just by twisting the, the kth generalized second space of dv is going to be the dual of the kth generalized second space of v for all v and c Okay, so hence D 
dv is also in c, as we expect. Um, and since uh, v chi uh, is assumed to be finite dimensional, d square v is obviously just v. So d is a duality for all v and c. Well, finite dimensional, so you're taking dual on the sum and it's, it's just finite dimensional. So dual dual is, is nothing. So d square v is v for all v and c. So d is, d is a dual operator. Uh, it, d, d is a duality. And then third, D is exact, obviously. Because by definition, like you just have to check it, it's, it is exact in the sense of vector spaces, but as vector spaces, D is just taking you on finite dimensional spaces, and then you take direct sum. D is exact, obviously. Now let's look at our last statement. Proposition 10. The, and the statement is that this, so, okay, so this duality functor D is defined on C, which is larger than O. So I want to show that it actually restricts to O. So if I have an object in a category O, I want V, then we, I, I want to show that DV is also an O. Okay. So D restricts to O. And the proof or to first let V to be an object of O. And the goal for D is D V is an object of O. Okay. So goal D V is also in O. Now, uh, by proposition, um, I think it's eight. By proposition eight, the equivalent proposition, V has a, so proposition 8.3 says that V has a finite filtration, finite filtration with quotients being L lambda kappa, right? For many kinds of lambda. By this proposition, it has finite filtration of this. It's actually if and only if. Well, but it, it does not really make sense for, for V, so then. So, that's enough. To show that that D when D adds on your simple modules, this is some other uh, L mu. Okay. Oh. Okay. Let me change the notation. L mu, lambda, L mu. So it's enough to show this because after we show this, and since D is exact, DV will also have a finite filtration with quotient being that L kappas, right? And then by proposition 8.3, again, DV is an object of category O. Use Eight point three again. DV is in O. Okay, so it remains to show this. It remains to show that D L mu kappa is L lambda kappa for some. 
some of that. And in fact, we're going to show stronger one. In fact, lambda, so such lambda will give you isomorphic G representation if you take dual. So this formula will determine lambda. Okay, so let me show this. Let's G module. So let me show this. So since these duality, um, we know that D L mu kappa is irreducible. Well, if it's not, then it has some non trivial stuff, and you take dual again. Uh, well, you also formally need to know that it's exact. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Oh, wait. Hold on. Okay. Right, but D is obviously exact. And then exact. Oh, well, D is exact. Is it reducible? Okay. So we uh, we are going to use the same trick again to provide some map. So uh, we have a we have a G map coming from some V lambda into this uh, vector space by the same trick. in the proof of proposition six. Well, that's so because the lambda that is so the eigenspace with the highest eigenvalue. And so you get this conclusion. Mm -hmm. Huh? Well, I mean, you pick very specific lambda no. and very specific conclusion. That's the inclusion of the highest eigenspace. Mm -hmm. Right? In no, but we, it's, uh, it's not only a map of G modules, it's also a map of modules of uh, formal power series in G. Yes. Yes. Um, right. So, by, by reciprocal again, well, we have a, a, a G kappa hat map, the kappa. And uh, oh, above we have that D L D L is reducible. Um, so proposition four. Okay, since D L mu kappa is irreducible and this is non-trivial, um, this maps onto that. But proposition four says the only onto map to an irreducible thing. We'll force that to be we'll, we'll force that to be L lambda kappa. So we have uh, L lambda kappa being D mu kappa. Uh, D L D L mu kappa. That's okay, so actually we are done. And if you just restrict that to the G action, you will see that mu and lambda are related by, by uh, the equation I gave where, uh, gave here, okay? So we are done for this proof. And this concludes my talk. Mm. Thanks for listening and if there's any question, I'm happy to discuss. Okay, but first let's thank Jing uh, for the talk. Uh, do people have questions? That's certainly a nice apple. <laughs> yeah. I have, a, I have a question actually. It maybe should yeah, have come. <laughs> um three hours ago or something like that but there's 
this, I, I guess you have G hat, and then inside of that is this G tilde, which is the polynomial part of mm -hmm. the affine Lie algebra. And yes. you defined uh, vowel modules as being induced, or basically you, in, you define vowel modules using G hat, but uh, in other places they're defined using G tilde, the polynomial part. Are these just the same? You mean other places? You mean other nodes? Yeah. I mean, maybe this is the more general question is like, how careful do I have to be to go back and forth between these two algebras when I'm thinking about? Kajdan lose the category or, or category O. Well, so, I mean, that uh, so, doesn't matter. Because, you know, you put a condition that weights are restricted on the above. And so, you know, every, every G, well, I mean, every, every polynomial, or every module of uh, Laurent polynomials will automatically extend to a module of the run power series. And in the definition of a while module, you only kind of, you, you, you oh, oh, sort of, you only add the negative part, and the negative part is the same. Okay, that's what I was at. So the characters are still the same. Yes, the same. that's just, uh, you have a natural equivalence of categories, and it's not just equivalence of categories, it just can consist of the same spaces with the same actions, essentially. So, I mean, if you look at uh, formal power series and uh, Laurent, uh, Laurent power series, because it's kind of a local object. It's an object which sits on a formal disk or on a punctured formal disk. And then for various, you know, kind of. Whereas, you know, when uh, you talk about uh, polynomial version, this sits on a punctured, on, on a on a line or a punctured line. That's a global object. And for various constructions, you want to live locally. For example, for the constructions that we are going to have in the next talk. So am I okay to think like the preference for the polynomial version is that that algebra can be presented is like a, a Cass Moody algebra. Yeah. But then and this up this up this power series or the, the Laurent polynomial version is not like no uh, power series version uh, Laurent, uh, Laurent series version is not. I mean it doesn't have a nice basis in a rigorous sense, but it has a nice topological basis.